You're watching News Made Easy and I'm Anandya Chakravarti. And uh, today I'm going to talk about preparing for a third wave of COVID-19. You'll say, why third wave? We haven't even won the battle against the second wave. Yes, that is continuing, that will continue. But we need to be ready for another wave, maybe again in September, October, as we saw last year. It can come again, like the seasonal flu does. And if that comes, we will not be prepared unless we do it right away. And that is what we are going to discuss in today's episode. So I mentioned the seasonal flu. We all know that it comes sometimes in uh, October, November, and then uh, lasts through the winter months and then peaks around February, March. There's no reason to right now believe that that is not going to be the case with COVID-19. We don't know whether there's a seasonality here, but the waves tend to show that there might be one. At least one should prepare for it, even if it doesn't happen. If it does happen, if it is something that comes seasonally, we have to remember that we'll not be able to vaccinate our people by October, November, when the next season, next wave could start. So for that, we need to prepare right now. Because why can't we vaccinate? Because as I said uh, in my last episode, we have about 94 crore adults in this country and each of them will need two doses. And if we have to produce 188 crore doses of uh, COVID vaccines, uh, that can't be done before January, February or even March, April next year. So we have almost a year to go uh, before we achieve 100% adult vaccination of COVID in India. And uh, what we need to prepare for is just two or three things. And we need to be ready with that. Number one is testing. We need to scale up testing dramatically because we know 80% of COVID cases are asymptomatic. And it is these asymptomatic people who spread it. Why? Because they don't know. It's not as if it's their fault. And uh, uh, what happens is that they might wear masks outside, but when they come home, they take off the mask, right? They have no symptoms. They don't feel unwell. They have no reason to test. So what do they do? They share meals. They sit in the same room. They chat. They hug their children. They are together with their old parents. And they pass on the COVID vaccine, uh, the COVID virus, the coronavirus, even though they themselves are asymptomatic. If they're tested regularly, those who are going out of the home, if they're tested regularly, tie up with companies, tie up with workplaces, tie up with various places, NGOs, if they can be given a test once a week, even once a week, then we'll be able to control many asymptomatic cases, as in monitor those asymptomatic cases. And what will that do? As soon as you have an asymptomatic case, you need step two, which is isolation centers. Decent isolation centers with decent beds, maybe uh, good food. Important thing is sanitation, right? Good sanitation, enough toilets for people to use, nutritious food, um, where they can go, where they can go and sit. They're already infected, remember? So it's not as if they're going to get in, more infected by being around other COVID patients. So they stay there. If they get worse, then you essentially move them to hospitals or treat them. In some of these places, you can even set up uh, broadband facilities, give them systems by which they can work from isolation center, right? Now, instead of working from home. So the most important thing that you do then is that before they start passing on the COVID virus to others, the coronavirus to others in the family, they've been isolated. They've been moved out of that space. Some might say, okay, I have enough rooms in the house, so I can isolate in the house right now even though I've tested. So testing plus isolation centers, these are very crucial. Now comes the third part. The third part, of course, is that uh, right, right now, we know that there are, there are about 150 districts in India which have most of the cases. You need to put restrictions. You need to lock them down. You need to stop work here. You need to deliver food. How will you deliver food? There is Zomato, Swiggy, various cloud kitchens, so many delivery apps, dhabas. The government just needs to give big contracts to these people. You know, there are millions of 
unemployed educated youth in this country who can be put to this kind of work many uh, of them would have already been uh, vaccinated or many of them maybe not vaccinated but at least some of them would have actually had already got uh, covid previously so they're covid survivors less likely to get severe case of covid less likely i'm not saying impossible but less likely so use them give them money give them 10000 a month people who have no money at all no job you'll have to spend about 2 lakh odd crore to do that not more than that right give them the job to do this work third most important thing is increase oxygen supply make sure that you can easily certify industrial grade oxygen which by the way is pretty good quality oxygen into oxygen that can be used for medical oxygen and then transport it because uh, uh, transporting is a big cost transporting oxygen put up oxygen plants in hospitals create oxygen bed hospitals and what do i mean by that i don't i'm not using any technical term it just a stand i mean you understand what i'm saying right get take over a stadium put a thousand beds there put partitions put oxygen uh, supply tanks put connections so that you can give at least low flow oxygen to these people set up a nice you nearby one of the reasons why people are dying right now is because they're not getting oxygen so as uh, faro kodwadia one of india's uh, mumbai's most respected doctors has said that oxygen needs to be treated as a drug in this case so oxygen is a drug if oxygen levels have dropped significantly and oxygen has to be given that is the first line the second line is once a person is on oxygen in some cases they need steroids if they have a lot of inflammation in the body and then the third drug the needed is Uh, some uh, blood thinner to ensure there are no blood clotting inside the body and these are just the three key drugs that doctors across the world say work right nothing else actually has been proven to work many have been uh, i mean who has said that some of them that are being recommended by doctors don't work remdesivir does virtually nothing except reduce fever by 5 6 days it has no impact on mortality but you'll see people running from pillar to post for remdesivir um convalescent plasma treatment controversial no one has been able to prove that it works and there's only some minor recommendation here and there by doctors but again we see uh, appeals on social media for plasma the key things are oxygen some steroids and blood thinners and of course paracetamol to bring fevers down that is what we need we need temporary oxygen beds oxygen hospitals to be created isolation centers to be created and let me tell you uh, just this year china created these things in 5 to 10 days if they can do that in 5 to 10 days yes you'd say it's an authoritarian country if a uh, order comes people will be too scared to not do it and they do it okay we are a democracy let's say and therefore it will take 3 4 times that amount of time but we still have time spend one two months to build things right now set them up right now for the future because we've already lost the battle as far as covid uh, wave 2 goes those who have to die have already died those who were infected are already infected and that is the reason we need to prepare for the next 6 months as i said vaccination is going to take another 8 9 months even if the government manages to procure them manages to import vaccines and give it to us it will take some time two doses will take some time remember astrazeneca in many cases we are being told that it is if you take the first dose now you should take it 8 to 8 weeks later in some cases some countries are giving it 12 days later uh, so therefore even if some people get their first dose by uh, let's say november december uh, everyone gets it even then we'll need another 2 months to complete the process so given that we need to be ready right now for the next wave if we are ready as we know from the case of madurai which dramatically improve increase the number of oxygen beds oxygen supply and icu beds that we'll be able to deal with it pretty easily we won't need a lockdown we won't need people uh, running around looking for hospital beds we need to prepare for this and finally the big point here is that only the government can do it no one else can do it they don't have the capital they don't have the 
ability, they don't have the access to data that is required, they can't operate without a profit motive. If they do, they'll do it only now and then disappear as company. So no one's going to do it. It's only the government which can work for something that does not create profit. There is no point in doing an economic analysis right now about the use of these beds, the use of uh, the resources that will be put into it. If it is not used, okay, remove them one year from now. But in reality, they should always be there because this is the first of these pandemics that we are seeing with global warming, climate change, with various kinds of uh, stories of biological warfare. These might keep coming. And we have to be ready in such a way that they are par for the course, that people won't die because of them. They'll fall ill, they'll go to hospital, they'll get better, and they'll come back. That's the only way if states, whether it is the center, whether it is state governments, come together and implement it.